I'm Old Big Len. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, a little article here in uh, Global News, December 29th, entitled Experts Question the Impact of the Foreign Buyers Ban. And it talks about, you know, the foreign buyers ban that was laid down by the socialist liberals uh, federally banning all foreign ownership. And has it had any effect on affordability? And of course, you know, the answer is no, not that we can see. And of, of course it hasn't. You know, if if they would have just uh, had a look at BC here uh, and and seen how it worked out in our province, they would have realized that. I mean, what was it now? Six, seven years ago, we introduced a foreign buyer's tax of 15%, which was later increased to 20%. And has that had any impact on our making homes more affordable? Of course not. It hasn't at all. I'm not going to get into all of it now. You guys, I did some, I think, some really in-depth videos on this back when it was first introduced and a number of good follow-ups that got, one of them got 10,000 views or more uh, on why this tax was useless. I told you guys at that time before it was implemented that, yeah, I was selling lots of homes to Chinese buyers, um, uh, detached homes in Richmond, East Side, West Side, condos. All, the vast majority, all of them, as far as I know, were in the queue uh, to get their PR status. They just hadn't received it yet. And at that point, the market was on a nice uh, run and they figured, let's buy now uh, before we get our PR because the, if we wait, the price is gonna be up another 100K. Once the foreign buyer's tax came in at 15%, that was it, done. But it didn't curtail Chinese from buying, they just waited until they got their PR or their full Canadian citizenship and then bought. And that's all it's been. Nobody's paying that 20% foreign buyer's tax. You'd be nuts because most of them are, are coming here at, at, at to get their citizenship or at the very least their PR status. And once you've got that, you can buy and not have to pay the 20%. But you know, it amazes me that they didn't you know, have a look at our system, but you see, what I've often said here, guys, is that they know that this isn't gonna have any effect. All this is doing is buying votes. It's, and it amazes me that there are, I think most people get this, but I still think that there's a lot of loyal NDP socialist voters out there that still think these taxes and restrictions are a good idea when they're doing the reverse, as I'm gonna get to in a minute here. They don't work and they never have worked. So, you know, they, they would have looked at BC here, they would have seen that this wasn't gonna work, but you see, the Liberals needed to buy some votes. It makes it look like we're doing something. And there's enough sheep out there to say, hey, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's put a ban on all foreign buyers. Sounds great, but it's not gonna have any effect on prices, which it hasn't. You know, take a look at the stuff that, you know, the circus we've got here in the, in the province of BC under the NDP rule here. Uh, and how has that worked out? Go back, I've done so many blogs, as all of these taxes and restrictions were introduced, I did many, many blogs on it, saying why it's not gonna work and why it'll probably have the reverse effect. So let me just roll through a few of them here. The latest one was the cooling off period. Cooling off period because the NDP didn't think that people were smart enough to be able to buy a home subject free uh, and uh, we wanted to put in a three-day period for you to think it over but if you canceled you had to pay a quarter percent penalty uh, you know, because and they all often said that hey it works in the pre-sale market they have a seven-day cooling off period let's just transfer it over to the to the uh, residential market resale market has it had any effect guys it's been in the uh, in place for a year now no None. I still write just as many subject-free offers as I always have. So far in 2024, I've already written three subject-free offers. And, and yeah, we write it, get it accepted, we wait the three days, and then it goes firm. But it has had no effect on pricing like they said it would, none. It's just another hurdle to go through, another nuisance more than anything. Uh, empty homes tax, BC spec tax, I don't know, again, just another tax grab. Has it had any real impact on pricing? No, won't get into that one because that one, there's a lot of moving parts. Go back a year, two years ago, I've done probably six or seven videos on the BC spec tax, empty homes tax, and I predicted back then that it's not gonna have any meaningful impact on the market. Um, one of my favorite here, the BC specula or sorry, the uh, flipping tax. This one is especially bad. Go back, watch what I told you about the flipping tax. There was little to zero flipping going on because A, 
The friction costs to buy and sell real estate in BC are astronomical. The PTT on the way in, which is the biggest tax grab going, the, the uh, commissions and conveyancing costs to buy and sell, and of course we've got the greatest deterrent uh, flipping tax anyways, it's called capital gains tax. 50% of the gain is taxable at your marginal rate. If you become a habitual uh, seller, if you buy and sell multiple homes in a short period of time, you don't even get the, the uh, capital gains tax. You will be taxed at your full marginal rate. I've done lots of blogs on that. The only thing this tax did, this has had the reverse effect, guys, as I pointed out, and I see it play out. The only thing this eliminated was renovators. And this, these renovators provided an incredible service to buyers. In other words, they would go in, they would buy a dilapidated old townhouse, they were professionals, they would renovate it, put 100K into it, plus all the time and labor, and then put it back on the market as a finished end used product you could move right into. And the great thing for the buyer was is that they could finance that additional cost. It was padded into the price. Now they've eliminated that now. So <laughs> it's, do you ever see or hear, what, this is what grates me the most, you never hear the fallout or what the repercussions of these taxes are. You never hear it in the socialist media. You won't hear CBC or anybody else talk about this stuff. I give you guys this, that's why I call it the inside edge. So they've eliminated renovators which were providing an excellent service for a first time buyer who did not have the spare $100,000 cash to reno. They could buy a renovated condo and pad it into the mortgage. The other one, the removal of the rental restriction. So I told you guys this one was a very bad move by the NDP. They said, hey, you know, we want to, it's going to make homes more affordable. It's going to get rid of uh, um, uh, speculators and all that other stuff, people that are buying condos to rent them out. Wrong. By, by opening that up, uh, the, the one good thing about uh, rental uh, restrictions, uh, not good for me and my investors because we couldn't buy it. But for first time buyers, it was great because it eliminated the competition from the deep pocketed investment buyer. Now they remove that. So here, I'll give you guys now, I've been waiting to do this. I'll give you two frontline stories. A uh, unit that I had out in Tawas, and I actually mentioned it in a blog here at the end of last year in October. Took me about a month to sell it. Good older unit, nicely rent out. This unit had a, this strata had a rental restriction on it. No rentals allowed. It was about a 38 year old concrete strata in downtown Tawasset. This, my sale was one of the first ones. My unit was rental, so it was a nice unit, uh, but without the rental restriction and ended up getting pretty much, I think for the floor that mine was on and I did not face, there, there's a golf course side and a street side. Mine was on the street side. As far as I know, new price record for the street facing unit. And the reason for that now is, is because instead of selling it to an end user, I had, had the ability to send it to, it, send it to an investor as well. Or at least a lot of buyers like to have that option, which I've often talked about. Maybe they're planning on moving into it and it's going to be a principal residence, but they want to have that option just in case they get a job transfer or whatever. The market might be slow. I don't want to sell it at a loss. I'm going to rent it for a few years until the market recovers. It's nice to have that in your back pocket. But here's another one. This one is prime. I sold this in December, an old wood frame, two bed, two bath on, um, in uh, Brig House area on Buswell Street in Richmond. Uh, right, almost right across the street from Skytrain, 50 year old strata. Now it's an old wood frame strata. This particular unit was in a state sale. Uh, the unit needed to be completely rent out. Borderline if it was even inhabitable as is. The, it needed a reno. It was very rough inside. Uh, this strata as well, very little change is hand. It's not a big strata. So I believe my unit was the first one listed now that they've removed the rental restriction. This building had, did not allow, sorry, this building allowed three rentals, 52 units, but of course it was full. Uh, waiting list to rent. Remove the rental restriction, list my home, I ended up with seven offers. Now, the two things going for it, A, it had development potential maybe in the next 10 or 15 years where it was. So that was, but that's still a decade away. The big thing was is that now you can buy it, touch it up a little bit, put a tenant in it. The buyer for this, sure enough, for this unit was a investor, 
new record price. New record price, and I can tell you that there was units that sold a few years ago that were far superior that had been renoed that didn't match this price. That The re main reason was rentals allowed, an investor was, pretty much everyone that looked at that was this unit was an investor because it was a good holding property. I'll buy it, I'll put 30K into it, clean it up, put a tenant in it, and I'll wait for that white night scenario down the road when the developer comes and we do a strata wind up and they'll put a you know 15 story condo, it's directly across from Skytrain. So there's a, a real life example of what the, that uh, removal of the rental restriction did. Did it make homes more affordable or have more access for first time buyers? It did the reverse. And you'll never hear the NDP or the media talk about the fallout from these things. They'll only tell you what it's going to do and make homes more affordable and get more people in the, in the market. And I'm telling you guys flat out, it doesn't. It doesn't do it. Final thing I'll leave you with, I'm kind of getting a good chuckle here, what's going on in Toronto. Have you guys seen what's going on in Toronto? I've been following it on Twitter, on X. That mayor that they elected there, Mrs. Chow, I did a blog on her about three months ago on you know her coming cap in hand to investors, come and build us triplexes and quads, and you can rent them out and go into business with us NDP as a landlord. <laughs> and how absurd it was. The numbers didn't add up. You'd have to be out of your mind to go into, into business with the NDP. So now the latest thing is they voted her in somehow. Now, apparently they only get about 42% about of the eligible voters vote. And that's about right. It's about the same thing here. Nobody votes. So somebody voted her in. You should have known better. Now she's hitting all the uh, Toronto uh, homeowners with a 14% property tax increase. It's not surprising. And that's what's going on, on on Twitter right now. You guys voted for. What were you thinking? Of course you're going to be getting and get ready for another huge one next year and the year after that. That's how the socialists roll. They tax everything to death. Tax the greedy homeowner. Tax the, the investor. But of course, the funny part was too, same things played out here. You know, the people that vote for these, these uh, governments, of course, most of them are renters and they think, hey, on paper, it sounds good. Let's tax the companies more, tax the corporations, uh, let's uh, increase property taxes, eat the rich. But what they don't understand is, is coming soon will be more rent increases for you. Who do you think is going to pay for these property tax increases? Well, the principal resident guy will absorb it, but the condo you're renting, that will be passed on in your rent. So they're going to be all up in arms next year when they get another 10 or 15% rent increase. This is how it works. This is kind of socialism. So again, I've told you guys, all governments are inept getting off topic here but i tell you guys vote for the party who's going to interfere with you the least less taxes less bureaucracy less red tape get out of my way let me do my thing pay my taxes because i don't mind paying my taxes i pay in the highest tax bracket there is six figures over six figures I don't mind paying my taxes. I'm a proud Canadian and, and Canada has been wonderful to me. But it's, it's where my tax money goes that bothers me. Most of it is wasted away through more bureaucracy and bloated governments. And that's what NDP are all about. So again, folks, I think most of my viewers here can kind of read the tea leaves and see through a lot of these restrictions and taxes. But be honest, have they really ever done anything here for making homes more affordable? No. And as a matter of fact, there's been pa most of these taxes and restrictions are just passed on to the consumer at higher home prices, and if you're a renter, in higher rent prices. I'm Old Big Line. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.